All right, let's get right into the recap today. Uh, I didn't record my live trades today, uh, but we can just go over the trades I took, uh, go over the charts, and the market is still open as you can see, so I'm recording as, as the market is live right now. Um, and it is a red day for me today, so I think it'll be a good day to go over and go over some lessons, uh, what I could have done better, um, you know, what I could have, what I did right, what I did wrong, you know, go over stuff like that. So, uh, so I traded two tickers today, uh, and the first one was SRA. Now, uh, you guys are probably familiar with this one. It's been, uh, been on the scanners for most people, uh, since yesterday, uh, they had a, they had a nice gap up yesterday, uh, fairly low volume. Uh, this one, I mean, it has the volumes. Okay. But it's pretty illiquid in my opinion. So, um, you know, knowing that, uh, these stocks can be very thin, very spready, and you really have to take the proper size when trading these. Otherwise you're going to get smoked, right? So, you know, this chart may look bad to some, but for me, it was all manageable losses because I took the proper bet size. You know, if I was taking five, 10 times the size I was today, you know, I'd, I'd get smoked and you know, there's barely any liquidity for me to exit uh, if I was taking that kind of size. So, you know, this is a good lesson to, you know, bet the appropriate amount for the tickers you're trading. And in this case, SRA, um, you know, if you look at these volume bars, pretty small, right? Most of them are under 200 K. Um, the majority of them are hundred K or less. So that tells you everything you need to know about the liquidity. So let's jump right into the first trade I took. Um, I was taking a short here, uh, as you can see, I started in short. And the reason for that was if we look at the daily chart from yesterday, it was running right into yesterday's resistance levels, right around these high 25s, kind of 26 area, right? And I was anticipating this level is going to hold as resistance today because the volume was just not there to make the push. But you also have to factor in, you know, the amount of shorts that are in this from yesterday, you know, the volume was a bit higher yesterday. So that could mean there's a lot of shorts trapped from yesterday swinging this thing overnight. And that's something I forgot to take into account when taking this position. And I kind of just disregarded it saying, you know what, I think this is just looking weak and you know, the volume's really quite pathetic on it. And I really didn't think it was going to squeeze, but as we can see here, it, it did, and it didn't take much volume to do it and stopped me out uh, over the high of the day there. So I uh, took a decent hit there. Um, but, Again, it's all relative with the share size I was using. I was perfectly comfortable with the loss. And if we zoom in here, I actually decided to flip long after I took the loss because I could see as I was watching the tape, I could see that they were actually going to, you know, rip this thing and there was very little liquidity uh, for shorts to get out. So they basically had shorts trampling over each other here to, to get out of their positions. They had shorts sitting on the bids here. As you can see, it was holding this nice support after the breakout. So it kind of held that breakout level after it broke. Um, but I was anticipating it might break out and then flush, you know, how they always do that. So they always do the, you know, the breakouts, they'll get all the shorts out and then they flush it. And, you know, we've seen that a lot in this market. Uh, so that's what I was anticipating. But, you know, if you're anticipating that, you have to be aware that your risk is a bit greater because you know, what if it doesn't flush, right? What if they keep ripping it? And that's what happened here, right? This is what happened to the shorts. They got caught. So I could see that in the tape and that's why I went long and sold into this move right here for a nice quick buck a share scalp. So I basically was break even from this point on from this short and this long, I was, sitting at a brown break even on the day, I think slightly red still. And I saw, you know, after that high of the day, you know, breakout, I saw that huge pullback and, you know, it kind of started to chop here a bit. And I thought, you know what, that might be the high for the day. Uh, they might have wanted to just get all the shorts out here, you know, all the early shorts, squeeze them out and then unload for the rest of the day. And you have to keep in mind with this ticker, they, they did announce uh, a proposed public offering. So they hadn't priced it in at the time and they still haven't priced it in. But you know, a lot of shorts are 
betting against this thing because they know they have to raise capital. But one thing uh, Shorts didn't realize as well, including myself, is this thing is a phase three biotech. You know, they have a drug that's done really well in the phase three trials just now. So, you know, you have to keep in mind they're, they're offering may be priced very well. So it could be, you know, 25 bucks, 24 bucks. It, it may not be a, you know, a terrible offering and, you know, offerings aren't always a bad thing for companies. You know, usually for small caps, they are uh, pretty bad, you know, because they usually tank the stock. But in some cases, you know, companies like especially biotechs, they raise capital because they always need capital to market, you know, to go through the phase trials and they actually need the capital and they use it to grow their company. So in this case, you know, it's actually quite bullish, in my opinion, this company, um, you know, if they raise capital because they they're actually using the capital to to grow and expand and market their drug. So that's one thing I don't pay too much attention to. Um, in my trades, usually I don't focus too much on the news. And in this case, it actually, you know, bit me because I wasn't paying attention to the fundamentals and they could have saved me from, you know, constantly shorting this thing today. But, you know, lesson learned and and that's why we do these recaps. That's why we review our trades, right? So again, I started a short right here. And again, I was thinking, okay, this might be this might be the top here. But I didn't like what I was seeing up here, so I reduced my position. I cut some off right there in front of that that high, uh, thinking, you know what, they might blow this through highs again. I just wanted to be safe, so I cut it off. And then I re-added as soon as I saw that rejection. So I, I added back to the position, and it basically just chopped, chopped, chopped for a while. And in this candle, I almost stopped out, but I was really watching the tape carefully here. And I noticed that you know, there was very barely any bids on the level two. And what I was seeing is it was literally just shorts covering and market ordering out on the offers. So they caused this move and then, you know, they sold right into this, all those shorts covering with no actual demand coming in here, right? So no actual real buyers. Um, they just used the shorts to, you know, to, to liquidate some shares into that move. So I stayed in the position into that. Um, but I would have, you know, I would have had to cut it off at a, at a higher price. So around 28 bucks, um, you know, if it kept going and, and I was willing to take that extra risk, you know, because I knew the probability was pretty high that it was, it was going to fail here. You know, I was watching the tape very closely. I knew it was likely to, um, fail. So I was willing to take that additional risk. And again, like we mentioned before, I was sized appropriately. So, you know, if you're risking a buck a share you know, you better be comfortable with that, that risk, right? You, you can't be taking, you know, X amount of shares and not be okay with losing, you know, a buck a share, right? So uh, that's where the bet sizing is very important. So as we scroll through, um, I'm still in the position at this point and it starts to perk up here. So at this point, you know, I'm still thinking, okay, they're just selling into these pops right now you know they're they're just getting shorts out working shorts out but then after this candle came in and it started to hold on these dips here that's when I knew okay they're probably gonna stop me out and I I should have and I could have stopped out sooner um, you know I could recognize it in the tape and the price action but you know I decided to stick to my plan and give it that wider stop and say you know what you know I'll use that wider stop if it looks like they're about to break through that that previous wick then I'll take it off. And as you can see, they did exactly that. And I got out just in time there. And once again, I not only stopped out, I flipped long here in this candle. So I decided to flip long again and basically just the tape reading, right? Just knowing that shorts are stuck because <laughs> I was one of them. And I just decided, hey, I'm gonna take advantage of this, just scalp it out. And that's exactly what I did, so. So at this point, I'm um, I'm red on the day because I took that loss and my my short positions were larger than my my longs. So you know those short short trades were bigger losses than the long trades. Um, so at this point, I'm red on the day. Uh, nothing crazy, but um, you know fairly fairly red on the day. And that's where I said, you know what? Okay, I'm done trading this thing. I don't have an edge. And and as you can see right now, it just broke new highs again, right? So. 
you know, I'm glad I stopped messing with this thing. So I decided to move on, you know, read on that ticker and I see Groupon uh, GRPN on the scans and I decided to take a position on that one uh, short. And as you can see, this one was a loss as well. So let's let's go over this trade. So, so I see this one popping on scans and I see the daily chart looks super extended. So we can see the daily chart here. Um, you know, it made a move from the low 22s all the way up to 28 bucks, right? 28.50. So, you know, that's a pretty big move for, especially for a large cap company, uh, mid cap, large cap company. And, you know, I saw, I saw some weakness after this move here. Once they, once they ripped through that 28 bucks, they came back down, ripped through it again, and they barely broke through that high. And then they just slowly let it down here. That's when I kind of got interested. So I started a short position here thinking, okay, maybe this thing just fades, maybe down to 26. Um, and you know, initially I was right. Um, I was willing to risk a bit wider on this trade as well. Uh, I took a smaller position and you know, it, it was working at the time, but you know, if you don't take your profits, this is the kind of market that can just turn on you, right? You can go from being in a decent win to taking a decent loss. And that's exactly what happened. So, so took a loss there. Um, you know, so what are some things I could have done better today? I would say locking in profits, um, and not going for home runs. I think that's a big one today that would have saved me a lot of money and may have actually kept me green on the day. Um, but instead I'm taking a pretty decent red day today because I didn't lock in profits when they were available. And this is a good lesson. You know, you guys can go for home runs. Uh, you might hit one out of 10, you know, it's, you know, the odds of hitting home runs are very, very low. Um, so, you know, my advice is always pay yourself, you know, take a little bit off when it's available. Right. And I'm saying this, not just for you guys, it's for myself as well, because I do tend to go for those bigger trades and those home runs, um, you know, just because, you know, I'm trying to make my risk reward make sense. And, you know, in this case, for example, like risking this, you know, 70, 80 cents or whatever it was, it doesn't make sense for me to cover for 70, 80 cents, you know, like I want to be making over a buck a share, at least, you know, buck 20, you know, you want to make at least double your risk, you know, one and a half to two times, you know, maybe if you're, if you're lucky, maybe three times or more. Um, but you know, that's what I try to do. I try to maximize my wins and, you know, sometimes we're just, you're just in a trade where it just doesn't want to give it to you. And you know, that is what it is, right? That's, that's the market that's trading. So, so yeah, main lesson today, um, you know, pay yourself when the market makes it available. Um, you know, it could have easily, very easily been a green day for me today. Um, had I just paid myself and that's the main takeaway from today. So, um, so yeah, I hope you guys found this one helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer. All right, guys. Cheers.